Regardless of what kind of camera I'm shooting with, I always try to recreate the organic analog look of film. And that's especially true when I'm shooting on an iPhone. So here are the five main things I do to create a filmic look. Number one, I shoot with a third party app like Filmic Pro or Cinema P3. So you can manually control the settings, specifically the shutter speed. That way you can use the 180 degree shutter rule, meaning whatever your frame rate is, double that and it equals the shutter speed. So 24 frames per second equals a 148th shutter. Next, be sure to use a neutral density filter so you can control that shutter. This is especially important when shooting outside in bright light. And really, just using this one accessory alone will greatly improve the look of your footage. Whenever I hear someone say, my iPhone footage doesn't look professional, this is almost always the reason why. And for creating filmic looks, I also like to use a mist filter, either built into the ND or a VND, a variable ND, or by stacking filters. Remember, iPhones over sharpen the footage, and so this is a really great way to make it look more pleasing and cinematic in camera. Now going back to the third-party apps, they're also important for shooting in higher bitrate codecs like ProRes, along with shooting in log. I always shoot log or sometimes flat when I'm going for a more cinematic filmic look, and in particular when I'm doing anything more narrative, like a short film or a music video. And the two best apps to do that, again, are Filmic Pro and Cinema P3. And last but not least is what you do in post-production, and specifically color grading. I always use film emulation plugins that allow you to choose looks based on actual film stocks. And in this example, I'm using Dehancer. Dehancer is a plugin that works in DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, and Premiere Pro. And now they also have a mobile version on iOS for iPhone and iPad. For this quick tutorial, I'm using Premiere Pro. So when you first drop Dehancer on, it'll give you a pretty funky look. <laughs> And that's because it's just using the default settings. Now this is shot ProRes Log using Filmic Pro, so it's Log V3 Plus. And the great thing about using software like Dehancer is you can come into the source and choose the input you want, whether that's just basic Rec. 709 or you can pick the actual camera. And they have tons of cameras. And they actually do have Apple iPhone Filmic Pro Log V3 Plus. You click that, and you instantly have a pretty decent looking image right off the bat. And then you go from this and tweak it to choose the different color grade, the different film stock, the different look you wanna create. But right now it is automatically emulating some film. And it does that in one fail swoop because I was able to choose the camera that it had built in, the profile. The very first thing you'll probably notice is the grain is really heavy. And so what I always do is go into the grain settings and I, well, let me first show you can enable it and disable it. You can instantly see the grain going. And again, it's pretty heavy by default. So what I do is go from negative to positive. Positive is a more subtle grain look and I like that much better. Then I typically bring the amount down to about nine, eight or nine. And then resolution, I often bring that up to a hundred. And then the other settings I usually lower just a little bit, maybe down between you know, 20 and 50 range. Again, this is all subjective and so do this to taste. And I'm just gonna go over the highlights of what I do here. This is not an in-depth tutorial, but the nice thing is it's not drag and drop necessarily, but it doesn't take a lot of work to make your footage look pretty good. So then I will go back to film and choose the film stock. It defaults to Kodak Vision 250D, which more times than not looks pretty good. On this particular project, I like Kodak Portra and I think I used 160. From there, you go through and again, correct the different settings, the different aspects, whether you wanna add more warmth, whether you wanna add more contrast, et cetera. The other thing that I really like about Dehancer, two things, is it has bloom and halation. Bloom is a really great thing to add to any footage. Even though I did shoot this with a mist filter, it's a very subtle mist, this bloom just gives it a little bit more of an organic look. And so you can see it enabled and off. And now it's on and off. And of course you have all the controls here and the main ones I usually use are diffusion. You can play with that. And then impact. Impact is more or less the intensity. Right now it's on 60, take it to hundred and it's more impactful. Again, this will just depend on the particular footage, the particular shot. And then they also have halation. Now halation is something that is often associated with film damage, but really 
to me anyway, it's very subtle, just adds that little extra organic analog look. That's on and that's off. It's super subtle. If you're watching this on your phone, you probably can't see it. What it mainly does is create little halations around the edges of stuff, bright edges and high contrast. And it has a little bit of a color cast to it. Again, it's really subtle and you don't really see it much in this example, but I do like to use it. I don't use it all the time, but I do like to use it on more digital footage, like iPhone footage, just to give it that little extra organic feel. Now, I already went through and did this, and so this is the effect I actually created. That's the final look, so that's with Dehancer. And then I also did just a very little bit of color correction using Lumetri Color within Premiere Pro. That's the log, that's with Dehancer alone, which looks great. And then I did, again, just some very subtle little adjustments using Lumetri. Some of the very fine tuning I still like to use, the color correction tools within Premiere Pro. And of course, if you were in DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro, you could do the same thing. Of course, understand color grading can be very subjective, but regardless of personal taste with colors, etc., this is a crucial step to making your footage look more like film. And really, that's whether you're shooting on an iPhone or any camera. I recently color graded a couple of short films that were shot on red. I used Dehancer on those as well to take the digital edge off and create a more cinematic and filmic look. So those are the steps I use to create more filmic looks shooting with an iPhone. It all starts with gear and apps, then how you shoot, and finally what you do in post. Follow these steps and you can create your own film-like footage with your smartphone. If you're interested in any of the gear mentioned along with Dehancer, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.